Hi, friends. Welcome back to the Biblical Momologue podcast. I'm your host, Michelle Flanagan, and the Biblical Momologue is where we talk about living through for Jesus through motherhood. I am so excited today to have with me Melissa Hannigan. Hi, Melissa. Hi. Thanks and, for having me. <laughs> oh, I'm so oh, I'm so glad you could be here because I think that um, what we're going to talk about today is so relevant to every mom out there, right? Inconvenient parenting. Yeah. <laughs> parenting. Yeah. I mean, if you're a parent, definitely... you understand it. it yes. Yeah. <laughs> Inconvenient parenting at what minute of what day, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Almost 19 years. Um, together, they have four children, three daughters, and a 16-year-old son, Joey, who graduated to heaven in June of 2023. Before becoming a, a full-time homeschool mom, that's amazing, um, Melissa worked with teen girls to overcome abuse, addictions, and trauma. As a national speaker, she's passionate about helping families discover God's very best. Her very first book called Inconvenient Parenting launched in August of 2023. And that's what we're here to talk about today. So I just have to give you major props for being a full-time homeschool mom. So just tell us a little bit about that. How did that all happen? Oh, well, it was definitely God directed. Um, my husband and I both were public school kids. My husband's mom is a public school teacher. So homeschool was not something that we like decided when we got married that we were going to homeschool our children. Um, it was actually my son. He was in fifth grade at the time. And he actually brought up the conversation about homeschooling. And we had a few friends that homeschooled. And so my assumption was he wanted to stay in his PJs all day. And he liked the idea of having access to the kitchen 24 <laughs> seven. Um, and so but my husband and I, we said, well, write us a list or a, a paper or a presentation of why you want to homeschool. And I was so impressed with the reasons why he said he had a million questions. And he, we were at actually a small wonderful private Christian school. We adored the school. His teachers were precious, but he was always asking all of these questions and the teachers, you know, they had a classroom of 15, 20 students. They couldn't stop right. and, and kind of dive down Joey's rabbit trails. Um, and he, honestly, he was bored. He was very gifted and um, he was already in a gifted program, but he just, he was hungry for more. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we got my second born daughter, or second born, my first daughter, she was diagnosed with dyslexia. And so I kind of already felt like I was homeschooling her because mm -hmm. she would come home with homework and I would do it all orally with her and write it out. And I was kind of reteaching her a lot of things. The poor girl was going into tutoring like several times a week, plus with homework after school. And she was just struggling. So after some prayer, my husband and I decided we, we would give it a shot for one year. We'll just do an experiment, see how it went. And we are going on year number eight now. I wow. Oh, gosh, my math is weird, but but <laughs> we never looked back. We loved every moment of it. I mean, obviously, it's challenging being 24-7, um, you know, for taking care of my kids, you know, as a, just a normal mom. And then mm -hmm. on top of that, being the educator, yeah. uh, it's had its challenges, but it has been such a gift. Uh, my husband travels a lot for work. And so we got to go on trips with him. Wow. Um, and so he would be doing work stuff and I would be at the museums or the zoos or, <laughs> you know, history sites with the kids. And so it, it was really the best decision for our family. But my best friend, her kids are in public school. So I'm not one of those like homeschool is the only way moms, but for us, that's the way that the Lord led our family. And I'm so, so glad he did. I love that. Um, what prompted it was all the questions, you know, that you knew the yeah. teachers just, to, you know, weren't able to answer. And yeah, I myself uh, was a public school kid, my husband as well. And my parents, both of them uh, were educators. So, um, and our, you know, our kids are in public school. Um, it's interesting because they're at, uh, my twins are sophomores and my oldest is uh, going to college. But uh, my twins have said they changed to a block schedule this year. So they have like on Monday, they have all of their classes. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you have these four classes for like, I don't know, 
80 minutes or something. It's crazy. And then Wednesdays and Fridays, you have these other classes for, you know, an hour and a half. And they, one of them, they came home today and one of them said, they're just not giving us work to keep, keep us busy through the whole block mm. period. They're like, we're so bored. And I was like, this is not good. Yeah. <laughs> this is not good. And they're both very intelligent. Um, so they, obviously they are able to get their work done and just kind of keep themselves busy. But it's kind of a shame that, you know, changing the schedule is causing that, you know, that boredom yeah. in them. So yeah. um, it's just kind of interesting that, yeah. So we'll see. Um, but wow. So like you said, it can be super hard to do all the things, the mom, mm -hmm. the teacher, you know, obviously yeah. writing a book. <laughs> yes, it's that like was a complete curveball that the Lord threw at me, Com not on my radar of things that I I, I'm a reader. I love to read. Usually yes. I I read Christian fiction and then some like parenting books and marriage books here and there. Never imagined that I would write a parenting book. <laughs> but that was that was definitely the Lord inviting me into a new adventure. And I'm so glad I said yes. It was two years of a process of submitting the proposal to the publisher um, finding out that yes, they're going to move forward with the book. And then That's cool. it was about 18 months of writing and rewriting and man, going through the editing process. I thought I was a good writer until <laughs> I had my, my precious developmental editor who made me sound so much better than I did the first time. But when I got my first draft back and it, she actually called me before she like, before you open the email, I want you to know, this is very normal for first time authors. There's a lot of red. And I was like, Oh my goodness, I'm a terrible writer but she was so great and walked me through that whole process and um yeah so in June of 23 we were getting ready to do the book promotional stuff which mm -hmm. again I'm learning first time author I'd had an interview schedule with focus on the family which was incredibly exciting and yes. I mean I grew up listening to and watching all of those programs and so to get invited there was just beyond belief and uh and then June 5th of 23 my son had an accident he was at a friend's house, dove into a swimming pool a little aggressively and hit the top of his head on the bottom of the pool. And immediately he said, as soon as I left the pool, I knew that it was not going to be good. He was instantly paralyzed from the oh chest goodness. down. It was a miracle of the Lord that he was able to flip himself over in the water and yell for help from his right. friends who were out there, pulled him out. And the, I mean, it was 16, 17, 18 year olds, and they were fantastic in the way they responded to the emergency. They called 911. They called my husband and I. Um, he was airlifted to the children's hospital. And all the while, he was so calm. It definitely like looking back, I can see the Lord's presence and peace was just with mm -hmm. him. He was telling his friends as they were waiting for the ambulance that how much he loved them and how much he appreciated them. And wow. God's going to use this for good. And I get to the emergency room. And he's reassuring me, mom, it's going to be fine. I can still serve the Lord from a wheelchair. It's going to be okay. And wow. I mean, just the, the maturity in him. Um, he had to have spinal surgery. And so the night before the surgery, our church family wanted to, we had a church basketball team. So they uh -huh. asked for a verse to put on their jerseys in honor of Joey. So they texted me, hey, ask Joey what verse would be in his honor. And without flinching, he quoted James 1, 2, count it all joy when you face trials. And I was wow. just... I was proud and astonished. I mean, I knew that his faith was genuine. I knew that he loved the Lord. But as a parent, those are the moments that you're just like, this is this is God. And I'm so grateful I got to witness it. He had such peace. Um, after surgery went well, he started physical therapy. The plan was we were going to go to rehab and mm -hmm. we were going to learn how to, I was going to you know, be his arms and legs until he learned how to function on his own. Mm -hmm. um, but after about two weeks in ICU, he had some complications and ultimately passed away 20 some days later. And I could go on and on about just God's goodness in the darkest of times. You know, that the veil between me and God was so thin. His his presence was so palpable. Um, but all of that was right before the book launched. So, of course, as soon as the accident happened, I called my publicist and said, hey, this is the situation. 
at the time it was just, I don't know how long we're going to be in the hospital. So pause everything. Right. And then as Joey passed away, I was like, I I, I, I don't even know. I don't know. Yeah. And so they kind of just, we had already pre-sold a lot of the books. And so they said, we still have to launch it on August 1st, but you don't have to do any of the promotional stuff until you're ready. That's I came so home. Kind. <laughs> I know it, they were so gracious, but I came home from the hospital and my author copies were waiting at the doorstep. And it was kind of a a gut punch of like, I just lost my firstborn and here this book that I've, it was almost like giving birth to another baby yes. that I poured all this energy and my whole family sacrificed as I wrote and edited and come home. And of course the book, it's the dedication is to all four of my kids and Joey never got to see the finished copy. Um, I was angry to be honest. I was angry with the Lord and confused. Like I know you called me to this Lord. I know that you were with me every step of the way. You knew that this was coming. Why would you let me do this? And God is so kind. I've learned in my grief that he is big enough to handle all of my questions, all of my feelings, all of it. There was nothing that I had to hide from him. But it was several months before I really circled back to that question. And the Lord was so gracious and kind. He he reminded me the peace that I had in the hospital, you know, as I was towards the end, we knew Joey was going to pass. And we had a couple days of just sitting there with him holding his hand. And so as a mom, I was looking back over his whole life, you know, being a baby and yeah. the mistakes that I made and the, the way that the Lord led me. And so much of that was what prompted and birthed this book. And so I had such a deeper gratitude to the Lord for the lessons that he taught me as a mom, mm -hmm. the the decisions that we made to prioritize family over everything else, the sacrifices that I willingly laid down my career as a counselor to be at the front row for all of Joey's life as much as I could. And, and so I started to see things a little bit differently. In January, I was able to start, I told my publicist like, okay, I think let's give it a try and see what happens. And so we, I said yes and started promoting. And the more that I got to share about God's faithfulness, honestly, it was a salve to my own heart. I was mm -hmm. repeating truths that my heart needed to continue to hear. And I was encouraging parents to, to seize every moment that you have with your kids, parent with no regrets, because I am so, so grateful for the relationship that Joey and I had. Number one, that the relationship he had with the Lord, and we'll get yes. to the qualities in a minute, but the very <laughs> first foundational principle for me is I want my kids to be children of wisdom. And that mm -hmm. starts with the Lord and knowing his word. And But then also my relationship with Joey, Joey's relationship with his sisters. I mean, I could talk all day about just how vital it is to put relationships over everything else, over academic success, over a clean house, everything else is yeah. secondary to the relationship between parents and their kids, between their kids and each other. And so all of that was the Lord truly walking me through this journey of motherhood. And those were the the nuggets of truth that I got to share with parents in the book. And so now I'm, I'm much more grateful. Obviously, I will never fully understand why the Lord allowed Joey to come graduate to heaven before I was ready. <laughs> but... Um, but I do have a peace and just thankfulness to the Lord for this, where he's got me so far. <laughs> and that it, it's, uh, thank you so much for sharing. Um, that can't be easy. And I am so sorry that you've been through all thank of that. You. So I'm so sorry for your loss. Um, I, I love that you took the time and just said, I can't do this right now. I need to step back. And you took your time and that your publisher was so gracious, you know, with all of that happening. And it's neat the way you can even see, and you could even see in that, that everything leading up to that point with making those changes in your life and spending more time with your kids led up to being able to write this book and, having those precious moments with your son, because like you said, we just don't know, right? And that the relationships are number one. And so there's just so many important truths in there that 
it's it's amazing that you could even tell yourself those as you were going through that process because you could see the Lord's hand in it and just that, you know, wisdom and maturity that you um, kind of developed or gained through that tragedy. So thank you so much for sharing that. And I know that, um, you know, other moms who have been through a loss will uh, be encouraged by that, by those words. And, you know, hopefully they will be able to look back and see places where God is walking with them through their loss and their grief. Mm -hmm. Thank they, you. Yeah, that's, it's so incredible that he had such a strong faith through that. And like you said, yes. that just must have done your heart so much good and given you such a comfort to see that. Oh, for sure. And even after he passed, you know, we, we moved um, a couple months afterwards, but I go through his things and I found quiet time journals and sermon outlines and just all of these little treasures of just evidence of his, his precious faith that I got to witness and see. It was a, a convicting and encouraging to me, you know, mm -hmm. as a mom. Um, but I will say that the faith, the presence of the Lord, I could see how he prepared me even in advance um, scriptures that I was studying and memorizing and hiding mm -hmm. in my heart that he used to bring out. And they were anchors for me in the hospital. And even since then, um, so my, my biggest takeaway that I encourage people be prepared before the storm comes, make sure mm -hmm. that you are getting into God's word and hiding it in your heart because storms are going to come for all of us. Maybe not lost like this, but everyone's going to go through really hard stuff. And the only way that we're able to walk through with confidence and faith is if we have spent time investing in our relationship with the Lord ahead of time, because that was what really held me through in the midst of it. And I don't know, I, I could talk all day about just <laughs> the power of God's word and how it was so comforting to me in the darkest of times and his presence with me. But again, it's not something that just magically happened. It was something that right. day in and day out in the, you know, seemingly boring sometimes study of God's word, but it was just that discipline of spending time with him and and getting to know him and understanding his character and who he is prepared me and hope and, and Joey and our whole family to know truth of the, about God, even when our feelings say otherwise, you know? Yes. And when the, those dark days come, those uh, verses that you've memorized and those passages that you've studied and spent time in, that's where your anchor it lies that's where your hope yeah. is is in that and not the shifting shadows of you know whatever yeah. the day is bringing or the weather and the emotions mm -hmm. and everything together you know when you go through a hard time it always just seems to everything happens right at once and so oh yes while we were in the hospital with joey my youngest child fell off of a monkey bar and broke her arm. Oh my God. So she had to have a cast put in. And I, I was like, Lord, yes. I I wanted to be in two places at once. I wanted right. to be by Joey. But my baby girl, she was nine at the time, never broke Aww. a bone in her body. Like we went almost 17 years without any broken bones. And in the course of a week, we had a broken <laughs> spine and a broken arm. Uh, but the hospital was so kind. They were able to put her cast on in the ICU waiting room. So I was not far oh, wow. from Joey, but I was able to be there with Charlotte. And oh, again, cool. it, God just put the sweetest people around us to provide for us. But yeah, it seems like when it rains, it pours. And it was just one thing after another. And, and it's continued even after losing Joey. We lost, my husband lost his job. We had such a situation where we left our church. It's just been a lot of transition and loss on top of loss and God has been faithful to us in the midst of it and so we're just holding on for dear life and saying okay Lord what's next <laughs> that that kind of <laughs> just leads me to another question which is you know I was just thinking about how you were talking about going through one thing after the other after the other and when stuff just keeps hitting like which you know, I can say in my own life, that's been happening a lot lately, <laughs> where we've had, you know, this happens, and then something over here is going on and brewing and, and maybe not my immediate family, but you know, my extended family or 
whatever. And do you, do you find that if you don't, um, like allow yourself to process what you're going through and just keep taking each thing to the Lord as you're going through, do you feel like you just can kind of glaze over it and move through oh, life yeah. without, because I can find myself doing that. Like, Oh, it's going to be fine. We're going to be fine. Everybody. It's all good. And then I just keep going because that's mm -hmm. what moms do. Right. Yes. And then I realized like two weeks down the road that I didn't deal with whatever mm -hmm. I was feeling about that thing back there. So that's just so important to stay in the word, like you said. Oh, for sure. And for me, a wise woman who had lost her husband several years before, she encouraged me to be very intentional about gratitude journal. Every day, find three things that I can be grateful to the Lord for, because there are a million things that God is doing. And we oftentimes look right past them. And so being intentional to look for God's hand has really helped keep me grounded and anchored. But you're right. It's easy as moms. I'll tell you last Christmas season, I was probably still very much in the fog numbness of loss stage too, but I was just going through the motions of, okay, we're going to put the tree up. We're going to put the stockings up. And my poor husband, he was just sobbing as we were pulling out stockings because of course, Joey's stocking and He's our firstborn child. So we had like five babies, first ornaments for him. And then by the time we get to the last one, she has one, you know, right. and so if every you're lucky, time we pull right? out a baby's first, right. Well, I bought it, I think two years after she was born because I felt bad, you know, um, but every time he would pull out another baby's first ornament for Joey, he just was wrecked. And I was just like numb. I was yeah. just like, okay, we got to just go through it. And, and that does happen. I think some of it is I can see God's kindness. And my husband and I take turns in our feeling the heaviness of grief. There are days where I'm struggling and he can help keep things going with our girls and other days where he's struggling and I'm picking up the, the weight. But I've had to remind my daughters and myself, it's okay to feel the feelings and to cry. In fact, it is God's gift to us. And I turned it into a whole science lesson about tears and how different emotions of tears look different under microscopes. I don't know if you know yes, that, but it's I, really fascinating. Yes, that is awesome. And like the, the, the tears of sadness, how they release a hormone that helps us to feel better. And so, you know, I have particularly at least one daughter, but at times probably all three of them where they just don't want to cry. They're afraid to cry. And, oh. and so reminding them it's okay. It's good. It is God given gift of tears and emotion. And he wants us to cry out to him. He wants us to lay it all before him. And so, yeah, it's easy to get into that rut of wanting to just kind of shove it down and, and keep, keep going. going. But as I've reminded my girls and myself, we can only shove it down for so long. It's going to come out in one way or the other. And if we are wise, we process it in a healthy way, then it can help our healing. But if we shove it down and ignore it, it's going to be more destructive in the long run. That's so like as a parent, it's so important for us to, to like find ways to deal with things in a healthy way so mm -hmm. that we can teach our kids that which right. is that is also something you mentioned in this book and i think it was in the sensitivity chapter but it struck me and i was like hold on hold on and i paused it and got my notes out and you said as parents we cannot teach what we don't possess and that just like that was like dumb <laughs> you know i thought golly like you know we have to find ways to go through hard things and you know we have to learn to take those to the lord and process through and do a gratitude journal like that's an amazing thing to do every single day find things that god is doing in your life not mm -hmm. i'm thankful for the sky you know mm -hmm. we can be thankful for the sky yeah. but god is really always on the move you know mm -hmm. and taking time like that woman told you to acknowledge that you know that it, we deal with things and then we can teach our kids you know how to grow in maturity that's such yes. a good lesson I, I remember hearing the phrase i can't remember where i heard it but the phrase where more is caught than taught right and my yeah. girls they're watching me every you know the way that i'm grieving the way that i'm 
trusting the Lord, they're, they don't want to just hear me tell them to the importance of studying God's word, the importance of obedience to the Lord. And, um, you know, and I think a lot of times we're really good at telling our kids what they should do, but we aren't always doing a good job of demonstrating it to them. And so that was kind of my heart in the book in general. It was an encouragement to parents to like do the hard things, remember why God has called us to parent and to, to, encourage these things in ourselves and in our homes. And then our kids will just naturally experience the blessings of them. Now that's not to say that we could do all the right things, right things. You know, we can yeah. walk with the Lord and pray for our children and live out our faith. And our kids can still choose to walk away from the Lord. Exactly. But yeah. we are responsible for putting the foundation right. And, and to demonstrate it. And so mm -hmm. my prayer for myself and for all the parents listening is that we would do the work that God has called us to do and the results are up to him ultimately, right? Yeah. And at some point in their lives, even if they do choose to walk away, they can always choose to turn back, you know, and that's yeah. where we, we never give up hope and we never that's stop right. praying. So even right. if they're, you know, there's someone listening who their kid has turned away, they just never, ever give up. Don't ever stop praying. There's so many, mm -hmm. um, stories you hear about parents who after 20 some years their child turned turned and said you know i grew up with this knowledge you taught me these things and i chose to walk away and then they choose to give their life to jesus and you know start walking with him so there's that foundational work it's just so essential and i love that you call it inconvenient because it truly is <laughs> most of the yeah. time Oh my gosh, I was laughing so hard um, in the chapter where you talked about them asking the questions late at night. That's yes. a classic move right there. <laughs> yes, my son, he was he was notorious for that. And I like to go to bed at a decent time. And he was just kind of ready to talk at 11 o'clock at night. But I'm again, I'm so glad that the Lord convicted me of this truth early on because those 11 o'clock chats are some of the most precious memories that I have of Joey mm -hmm. now. And so if I can give that gift to one parent to say, I know it's hard. I know it's easier to say, Google that, or just <laughs> we'll talk about it tomorrow. Right. I mean, I share um, in a chapter on curiosity, an example of one of my daughters asking me a very awkward question at the <laughs> playground. And it's another example of like, there are a lot of times where our kids ask us things that we are just like, I don't want to deal with this right now. She right. asked me, how can two mommies have a baby? And I don't know where she even came up with that. I, I have no idea. But um, but it gave me an opportunity to talk to her about God's, God's plan and creation, mm -hmm. the, his perfect desire for humanity, and then how sin entered the world and it changed, you know, the way that families look today. Um, again, I, I, at the time, I was like, I don't want to have this conversation in the middle of the playground right now. <laughs> um, I did I did tell her, you know, I appreciated her for coming to me with that question because, you know, I write in the book, we want our kids to continue to come to us with their questions because they're only going to get more complicated yes, and for more sure. essential that they're rooted in the truth of God's word and not what their friends think or what the internet says is true. And so I, I thanked her and I said, that's great that you came to mommy with this question. Now is not the time to have this conversation because there are other little kids around that maybe haven't had the talk about how babies are made with their mommies and daddies. So we'll circle back to that conversation when we get home. And then I had a decision to make. Do I bring it up again <laughs> do or do back? I let it go <laughs> right um but again I I wanted her to know that there's nothing that's off limits as far as questions with mom yeah and um and I'm so glad again that that the Lord led me to to set that foundation because now in our grief there's a lot of questions that they have yeah. mostly I can't answer them but I can say I understand why you are one wondering why did God take Joey mm. I remember not very long after Joey passed, one of my daughters was in Sunday school and they were doing prayer request time. And, you know, in elementary age, 
that's like all the kids love to give all the prayer requests about the sick puppy. And one of them was a grandma that was sick. And then the next Sunday she was better and praise God. It was a miracle. He answered our prayers and my sweet girl's crying to me going, but why didn't God answer my prayers when I prayed for Joey and everybody prayed for Joey and God didn't answer. And, you know, I was so glad that she felt safe enough to bring those hurts and questions mm -hmm. to me. And, and I, told her honestly I've asked the same question and I've come to understand that we have to accept the good and the hard from the Lord mm -hmm. and that it's oh God is okay with us wondering and asking but ultimately where I find my peace is trusting that God's ways are higher and bigger and better than mine and someday on the other side of eternity it'll all make sense and in the meantime we just have to hold on in faith and I'm just so glad that the Lord led us to have these kinds of conversations ahead of time where they felt safe to talk to me about their feelings and the sensitivity chapter. I talk about that, yeah. about their questions and that they know that more than anything else, I want them to feel safe with me, to know that they can talk to me about anything and everything. And no matter how inconvenient it is. And there are times where I'm, you know, elbow deep in, doing the dishes and that's the moment that they want to have these conversations of so I'm like hey you want to help we can yeah. talk while mommy's doing <laughs> grab that towel over there and yeah, dry while I dry well yes um but other times it's like okay well when I tuck you in for bed tonight we'll have a we'll you know we'll talk some more about this or we'll pray about this um but again those those habits that we set into place years ago have been such gifts in this season of hard and pain. Um, and again, God has just been so good to us in the way that he's led us to parent. And that's my hope is to share some of that with other parents in the book. I'm not an expert parenting expert. I mean, <laughs> I'm still figuring it out. My oldest <laughs> would have been 18. So I am not like, I can't look at my adult children and say, look how well adjusted they are. But <laughs> I can say that I, I have experienced the peace of knowing that I, it's so, it's probably weird to say to somebody who hasn't lost a child, but as a Christian, I look at Joey and I go, well, my goal was to raise a child to serve the Lord and become everything God created him to be and for him to, to be with the Lord. And so I'm like, okay, one down three to go. Like, I feel like the Lord has allowed me to accomplish that goal yeah. in Joey's life. And as much as I will always want to experience more days with him and to, I mean, it was going to be his senior year of high school, my first homeschool graduate. And this would have been his first year going to college. And we had visited college campuses and he'd taken the SATs and wow. we were ready to do that. Um, but there's no better place that I would want him to be than in the presence yeah. of the Lord, the yeah. education that he's getting. I was telling one of my girls the other day, I don't have to worry about Joey not feasting well because he's getting fed from God himself. That's right. That's, I mean, yeah, even though these earthly things are so hard, these milestones and these things that we think of, and they are important and they're exciting in our lives and their lives. But what you said is true. There is no better place than in the presence of Jesus and holding on to that truth and the fact that your girls and your husband are holding on to that truth as well. Um, and it's because of that work you do when they're really little and you invest in investing in them and take the time and answer the questions and stay up late. I remember many of those nights, my oldest was no is notorious for that. They are still, he'll come rolling in our bedroom be like, all right, so I've been really thinking about this or whatever. And he's, you know, he lives at home and, and goes to college and we're like, okay. And of course my husband is always asleep. Okay. <laughs> or yes. the, he's Almost. out, like he starts yeah. shutting down around 9 PM, him and the dog are both snoring. And I'm like, really? <laughs> so I guess it's up to mom, but no, it's, those have been the most, encouraging and also insightful times for me because when they come in in late or they 
you know, I walk into the, one of their rooms to tell them good night or whatever, you know, shut down and go to bed or whatever it is they're doing. Um, those are times of insight where like, if they are sharing their heart with you, that kind of lets me know what I need to be praying for, you know, how yeah. can I direct my prayers? Like I've been praying towards this end or just for God to cover these general things, but you're, you're revealing to me that there's something else going on in your life. And I really need to be aware of that and pray for that. And then circle back and ask them a couple of days later, like, Hey, how's this going? Whatever happened with that situation you were telling me about the other night, you know, cause every now and then <laughs> they'll open up teenage boys, you know, but it's pretty classic to do it late at night you know one of them he's still pretty much a vault but he's the quiet introvert and the sensitive chapter had my mm. um my ears really perked up because he's always been our sensitive kid but he's also like you were talking about your daughter where the noises and sounds and the overwhelm mm -hmm. when he was little there was all the sensitivities the socks we bought special socks with no seam because if the socks like he felt something on his toe it was very bothersome and it was just that overwhelm of this big world and how do i process mm -hmm. it and so like he's our introvert so i'm always checking on him <laughs> like how are you doing how is school how is this how do you feel about that and he just looks at me mom i'm fine <laughs> like mm -hmm. okay so it's just yeah, it's just taking those opportunities and those inconvenient times. So mm -hmm. it's, I love that you said that you built that foundation with your kids when they were little. So to all those moms out there with littles, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's worth it. Like mm -hmm. take the time, do the things, answer the questions. Um, yeah, it'll be worth it, right? Right. In the yes. end to invest. It's it's a different kind of hard when they're little, right? It's, yes. it's exhausting because <laughs> it's a lot of physical, but the emotional part of it is so much easier. Right. You know, my you know youngest where they one, are. <laughs> yes. My youngest one, I, she's 10 now, but still when she's sad or hurting, either she's bumped her knee or she's missing her brother. All I need to do is pick her up and hold her and give her a kiss and say, mommy loves you. And that helps my 16 year old. It's a little bit harder now to yeah. comfort her. You know, sometimes she wants mommy to hug her. Sometimes she wants her space and it, it it's a lot easier when they're little. And so I, I miss those precious times of, you know, getting to be there and doing all the fun, silly, artistic, creative, playful things when they're little and if you set that foundation when they're little, there is a better chance for that to continue when they're older. I've seen, you know, I write about humor and playfulness. Um, and I'm so thankful, number one, that it's a gift from the Lord. Like humor and playfulness are things that God placed inside of us so we could experience abundant, full life with relationship with others. Um, but in some homes that discourage playfulness they they miss out on that part of joy that the lord has for us as families and i i shared in the chapter my husband is much better at playfulness historically than i am i'm the type a mom let's get our assignments done let's get the kitchen clean <laughs> and he's the one that wants to turn everything into a game something silly and as i was writing this book um and uh i was researching kind of this attitude of playfulness and how much it helps in a lot of aspects of life, um, I leaned into it. I said yes more to the silliness. And one of my favorite memories is one day I was going into the kitchen to, to do something in the sink and we had one of those sprayer nozzles and my <laughs> husband had turned it so that when I turned the water on, it sprayed me right in the face. And in that <laughs> moment, I decided I was just going to lean into the fun. And so I just started spraying him back and it turned into a whole water mess in the kitchen. I think <laughs> Joey went and got one of his super soakers and came into the, that, the kitchen. That's awesome. I mean, it was, it was a disaster, <laughs> but again, it's those, pr those precious memories that I could look back on with such joy. I could have missed that mm -hmm. if I would have gotten irritated, which was my normal MO, honestly, to just be like, Oh, more that. of a mess to clean, you know? Mm -hmm. And so 
the Lord just really put it on my heart to to enjoy the life that he's given us because there are hard things that we're going to go through. Mm -hmm. But even in our grief and even in the darkest of times, we have been able to find things to laugh about. And that has been so healing for us to laugh together as a family and just have that joint kind of experience. It's just so God created us for that relationship, that fellowship and humor and fun is one of the ways that we really knit together as a family. And that definitely does draw you closer. Yeah. The being able to. I bought into this trap and the lie that, you know, I had to make things magical and memorable and like oh, yes. the house <laughs> needed to be a certain way, or I had to keep up on, you know, social media with, well, I didn't do first back to school breakfast and everything oh, yes. wasn't cut out and, oh, my gosh, and beautiful. The pressure. And that's the, <laughs> right. Yeah. But that's not the things it's they crazy. remember anyways, mm-hmm. right? They remember when we're having a good time together or not so much, but, but the things that they remember are not the things that we're putting pressure on ourselves to try to create a memory for. It's just usually the, the natural things that happen as we spend time together. <laughs> so exactly. It's a good reminder for me too. <laughs> well, and it's like, um, your book is called inconvenient parenting and it is out wherever books are sold, right? Amazon, mm-hmm. I know for Amazon, sure. Yes. And it's on Audible. If you are a mm-hmm. listener, if you like to listen while you, while you walk, like I do, that's a great place to find it. Um, and the 12 qualities, we talked about a couple of them today, were wisdom, wonder, vitality, sensitivity, flexibility, curiosity, creativity, imagination, inventiveness, playfulness, humor, and joy. So it's such a great book. I hope that everyone will check it out. Um, Before we go, I had one last question for you. And if you don't have anything, no big deal. But Mm -hmm. I love to find out what people's favorite mom hacks are, like tips or tricks to make mom life easier. If you have anything that works for you, like, (laughs) it sounds like you have a pretty busy life, like things that help (laughs) you stay organized or in the kitchen or anything. I'm a sucker for mom hacks. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I don't, I'm not very good at organization. Honestly, my 16 year old daughter is my organizational queen. That's Um, wonderful. I know. I'm so grateful. It's like, I have created like a better version of myself. Like she cooks, <laughs> she organizes, she helps with her sisters. I'm like, thank you, Lord. She's such a gift. I don't know. The only hack, and I don't even know if it's a hack, but it's not really for organization, but for me, memorizing scripture for my girls, like music okay. has been so huge. And especially for my daughters that are dyslexic, like just writing verses down and putting them around the house, which we do. It's not as helpful for them. But if we can find a song already on YouTube or just make up a song to a tune we all know and put the words to it, it really helps a different part of their brain remember it versus That's great. just speaking it. So we're I working on mem- We've been singing this books of the Bible songs regularly just because we get caught up in those uh, minor prophets. <laughs> so we put it what? into a song. Yeah. And it's really been helpful. So <laughs> I don't know if that's like a hack, but <laughs> that's great. But yeah. I love that scripture memory to music. That is an awesome tip. Mm-hmm. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. And, and thank you so much for coming on today. I could I could talk to you for another hour, but oh. um, you're a mom and you have a busy life, so we will not keep you. But I will put all your information in the description so people can uh, go and check you out, your social media, and um, I'll put a link to your book as well. Um, and uh, if there's anything else, is there anything else you'd like to add before we close out? Nope. I, okay. It's been a pleasure to be here. And I'm praying for all of the, the families listening that they would just seek the Lord because that you're right. There's no one right way to parent, but there is God chose each one of us for the kids that he gave us. And so we just have to seek him and he will guide us. He's faithful like that. That is very, that is a very comforting and encouragement. Um, final word. Thank you so much. Thank Bye you. everyone. Bye.